So, hi everybody. Um, we're starting to do a few little chats about uh, relevant Shibari subjects. Um, this is one of the first ones, uh, so we hope you enjoy it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and do all that good stuff that helps us uh, on YouTube and so on. So, um, what we want to talk about today is really the first area is really what got us into Shibari. Um, and then we want to talk about a few other things concerning that, things that we discovered um, that were absolutely eye-opening to us, things that we discovered that were complete myths, um, and various impressions, which I, I hope you'll find useful. What got you interested in Shibari? Um, okay, so, pour moi. I have always been quite kinky and always been into gymnastics and aerial and I just stumbled across when I was very prolific in my aerial career this beautiful image of this woman tied up in this you know ballerina-esque almost position you know back arch the legs stagged and I thought oh my god what the hell is this it just matches up kink and aerial and gymnastics and the manipulation of the body so beautifully and I just had to get into it and I was very lucky actually that I met Bruce and Nina um, at the beginning of my journey I went on the internet on all these different forums all over Facebook trying to find somebody to tie me and then I met you guys we got on like a house on yeah. fire, and then boom, I'm working for them the next time I come and meet them. So We were, we like have, we, we were very rude, actually. We didn't introduce Sophie. Uh, <laughs> although I'm sure a lot of you, if you watched our tutorials, know her very well. Um, and I guess if you, put, most of you know my ugly mug, Bruce and Anne. And the lovely Nina. <laughs> um, we worked together with Shibari classes, and um, Nina started as my model and partner. Um, and has since learned to time very well herself yeah. and teach. Yeah, thank you. So, yes, anyway, let's move on. What got me into it? Um, well, I suppose my knowledge of bondage was pretty minimal before I discovered Shibari. Um, it was really just four limbs to the four corners of the bed and, and fuck, that, you know, nothing really very sophisticated at all. Um, and then a girlfriend showed me this magazine she had, a kink magazine. Um, I forget the name or where it was from, but it had an article on Shibari. And unusually for that time, um, so they were talking about the sort of deeper, more philosophical, the connective side of it, and the whole potential beyond just simply restraint. Um, and I'm, I'm talking like probably 20, well, 20 odd years ago, maybe even more now, um, when the knowledge of Shibari was pretty minimal in the West. Um, there was more misinformation than information, and certainly very few people were talking about the connective aspects or anything beyond restraint. So I was very lucky to have that sort of eye opener, and then I, I stumbled upon another person who was preaching this gospel long before me, Midori. And I bought her book and again noticed that she was talking about how you tie, your demeanour, um, the little sort of games that you play, the interaction and more than just the tying and that inspired me to go to one of her workshops and well kind of from, it's all history from there. <laughs> I, I got a bit of tuition from people who had had exposure to people like Osada Steve um, and then uh, picked up what I could from around the internet uh, and people that I knew and so on um, and eventually ended up to going to Japan for tuition and so on and so forth but anyway that's another story so let's move on to Nina. Right, how I got interested in Shibari? Well I've seen an image just like Sophie, mm. just, you see an image on on the internet with this girl being tied. There was, in my case, there was nothing about um, flexibility or gymnastics or anything. I really liked the idea of being 
tired of being entrapped, of being captured. And I wanted to be the one that is captured. And unfortunately, I got captured. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. And I think, yes, I think I like the, the psychology a lot yeah. behind the tie me and do something to me. So it was not about how the rope will feel on my body. It was about tie me to the four corners of the bed and do something to mm. me. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And whatever you do that, that would be fine. So I did like being in, you know, oh, I cannot protect me, you know. The vulnerability. The vulnerability. Yeah. The, the expiation of guilt as well. Yeah. That's exactly. another thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, um, exactly. The challenge. The I bearing. can't do anything about these awful things you're yes. about to do to me. Yeah, exactly. I'm dying. You know? I'm, yeah. I'm a nice girl, really, but I can't <laughs> protest. <laughs> you know. I should like protest, that. you know. But, but, now but I'm I can't. not going to. No, I can't do anything. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, I, I've written a bit about the various things that people get out of Rome. Mm. And that's one of them, definitely. That, that sort of removal of the guilt that yeah. you've been brought up with the yeah. nice girls don't do that sort of thing. You exactly. Know. Um, and I think that's one of the things about rope is that it's it does encompass so many different areas. There's so much to it, but generally you only see that little bit that sticks above the waterline. Yeah. It's like an iceberg. There's, yes. you know, you either see, let's say, the beauty of it or yeah. the idea of restraint. Yes. Um, but. What often isn't seen, I think, and it's what one thing that you know we're all very aware of is is how profoundly um, moving it can be yeah. if you you use it as a language. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the most important things that that I've discovered learning about rope. For me, it was you know it was mind blowing. I was always very submissive, not so much now, <laughs> but certainly when I first started Shibari, I didn't think I had a dominant streak in me until I picked up a piece of rope. That happens to you me. Know, exactly that, was, the same. that was the switch. Exactly you know? the same happened to me. But There's it a was, little bit about. It was, it was just this, like, this release. It was almost quite spiritual, really. You know, you're accepting what your body's going through. Mm. That acceptance is so profound because you know it is tough m most of the time shibari you know it's it's hard it's you're putting your body through some real challenges and you kind of go through these different phases of like oh shit you know this is Do really really hard and then you you calm your breathing down and you relax into it and it's such a profound psychological process to go through and you feel really strong. Well, I did, speaking for myself, you feel so strong in ropes because, fuck, what have I just done? Look what mm. I can do. Look mm. what I can put my body through. Yeah, yeah. I'm, this is amazing. And it's, it's that acceptance of pain, of vulnerability and completely giving into it and also putting that trust into somebody. Again, that's, that's so profound, you know. Yes. We've, and also we've learning been, how to trust yeah, each other because yeah. it's a process that one Absolutely, as well. Absolutely, you it's know. It's not granted. Nobody no. trusted you from the first second. No. It's something that we learned. You to have to earn it, you know. And I mean, exactly. I think that's a secret, certainly for. I have to trust you as well. I have to trust yeah. that you're giving me the right feedback. feedback. Yeah. And yeah. I have to trust that you know yourself mm -hmm. well enough to give me that feedback. Because even if you if you do want to give me a good feedback if you don't know you well yourself. Yeah. You can't. And you cannot know well yourself till you actually do, do it. it. Yeah. So yeah. you can experience and learn about those kind of things. So it's a it, it that, certainly is a dance of emotion, trust mm. and you you get to learn your body. Yes. Well I think the other right. important thing as yeah. a rigor is tuning in to what your partner wants at that time. Yeah. Um, because some people, like you, like yes. to be challenged. Yeah. I know some people that if the session isn't painful... It's pointless. They, they, don't, they don't feel they've had a session. Yeah. It's a bit of a waste of time. Yeah. But for other people, what they're looking for is something perhaps very sensual. Yeah. 
Um, and we can have an exception to this when actually simply the body changes from day to day. So, for example, I am in the mood for this now, oh God, but yeah. that's not going to be the case. That's the same for as me. It's like sex. Exactly. You yeah, know, you one know. day, you know, you want the soft romantic rose petals yeah. and blah, blah, blah. The next day, it's. You want a fist up your ass. Well, yeah. <laughs> as you so delicately put it, Sophie, yes. <laughs> We are going to beep that. <laughs> yeah, we might, might might have to put a put a for YouTube sensibilities. <laughs> but that was a good one, though. <laughs> Mind you, it's not a question of being monetized or demonetized. So hey. <laughs> Still. Uh, what else did we have on there? Um, but you were saying about the um, continue actually. Sorry, I disturbed you. You didn't... from day to day, the the mood changes. Is that what we were talking about? I mean, certainly for me, my God, you know, sometimes I want to be really challenged and, and brutal and brutalised, but then there's days where it's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you, you just have, have your period, yeah. you have to take it slow. Yeah, you yeah. know, I want, I want to feel nice. Sometimes I don't want a suspension, you just want a kind of cuddle with the rope, and there's other times where you're doing it purely for a shoot. And yeah. it's like, and you know... Yeah, sometimes, it, yeah, it's, it's completely sort of very professional, yeah. very... You know, it's about what it looks like rather than how it feels for me. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. sometimes you'll go through a little bit more and a more discomfort than you might do because you know that the... It looks It stunning. looks beautiful. And for mm. me, you know, that's very important is feeling beautiful in ropes. You know, if I feel ugly, it's like it kind of takes it's a everything. balance, isn't it? Yeah. That you have to put in, you know, a bit of... A bit more pain, but a bit more beauty. beauty. Yeah, or a bit less pain, yeah. but a bit more comfort, and then maybe yeah. those are the you know if you want to have a session and actually making it very comfortable, yeah, and actually you know enjoying probably maybe a bit more sexually, yeah, you know you don't have to make it beautiful. No, there. no, it's about how it feels. There's all all manner of ways to tie and, and to play tied. with shibari. Yeah, indeed, when I start doing shibari, for me was more about. Um, especially when I start tying, so not mm. just as a model, but after starting to tie, it was more about the the circus part, the circus part of shibari. So it was not about the connection as much as how many beautiful positions can yeah. you achieve. Yeah. So I knew it was hard for the model, and but I wanted to achieve that. And then with time, that a bit changed because I've. What I've discovered and I realize is that the sexual part of, of shibari and well going back to when I was modeling mm. I never thought shibari as sexual in no way though I was I wanted to be tied the, the, when I was for example you go we were going to um, I was performing with Bruce I was mm. his model and we were going to different festivals and the suspension, the performance involved suspensions and transitions, and it was very much a performance. Yeah. But it, I, I never interpreted that as sexual. No, and I don't think I did when I first started doing it. Really. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I think it's it's it can be whatever you want it to be. Yeah. Um, I think that you know if you want to practice it as an art purely artistic practice. If that's what rocks your boat, fine. Absolutely, exactly. Um, however, I think it's very wrong to deny the oh. sexual roots of it. Yeah, yeah. Because in Japan, um, from my ex experience anyway, um, it's either something that's performed more often than not in places where they do strip shows and similar things. Yeah. Um, it's done for erotic entertainment. Um, Certainly in videos, so that's it, the purpose. It would involve as well, like candle on the skin and weeping, maybe. Yeah, SM and hot but, dogs you know, and all sorts. I mean, yes. even, even, <laughs> yeah. even some of uh, Nureki's early tutorials. You know, the um, the student got a job or something as a reward for a, a good, well well done tie. You know, it was a combination of tutorial that's and we need to do it again. Um, so yeah, no, it's 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 undeniably got very sexual roots, but mm. by the same token, um, 
it's being taken into all sorts of areas. I mean, like Kinoko's tying buildings, for example. Yeah, you know, stunning. Um, amazing artwork, but couldn't be further from sexual. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, whatever you want to make of it. Um, How your perception of Shibari has changed? For me, it's definitely, it's gone from something that was purely, you know, artistic and professional to something that I, you know, I prefer to focus, especially if I'm tying somebody, it's all about connection because, you know, I'm nowhere, you know, I'm a beginner still when it comes to tying and I'll do sessions just using a single column tie and a couple of frictions. It's nothing amazing, but it's effective. putting that person, you know, into a position and, you know, the way that you touch and approach the ropes and the session, that's far more important to me than doing fancy stuff. Absolutely. You no, know? no, no. I mean, it's all in how you do it. Yeah. Um, you know, no specific tie is a magic spell. I suppose no. that's kind of one of the things that um, I've realised is that it's not necessarily about complex ties or neatness. Mm -mm. It's all in how you do it. Yeah. Um, how you interact with yeah. the person. How much yeah. fun you're both having. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Excitement you're both <clears throat> experiencing and I think my I think the perception of Shibari has changed in a way that I'm realizing how important are the people that I'm working with, especially yeah. when it comes to trust. Yeah. Which yes. was something yeah. that I was not considering at the beginning. Yeah. At the beginning, you know, a girl could have come to me, come on time me and I would have died her right away. Yeah. Without considering without like vetting her. Without moments. vetting her in yeah. any form or shape, yeah. which I think that was kind of a mistake, but I was yeah. so exciting to to have the opportunity to die that I was Anyway. Yeah, yeah. But with time, I realized that, and it was alright because I was not doing, you know, complex things. Yeah. But with time, I've actually learned that it's very important to um, to have a steady model to begin with. Yeah. To learn to trust each other. Yeah. To develop that relationship. Yeah. Know each other's limits as well. Exactly. You know, I know you both. Mm. Exactly. Know my limits quite well, exactly. and even if I'm struggling, you still know it's okay. She's got this, and yes. I know I've got this, and I know I've got this because. I know they know. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> and still now we will work with no problem, with no issues, yeah, with no exactly. nerve damages, no. And nothing, because we've been able to communicate yeah. well enough yeah. to get out of that kind of trouble if yeah. he was lurking <laughs> yeah. nearby, right? Because that's what a good feedback yeah, does. Yeah, and mistakes always happen. I think the other thing as well is, is that you've got to understand, especially as a model, that you do have to communicate as openly as you can. Sometimes it is difficult if you're in a you know if you're in a really stressful position mm. but then you have to kind of talk about ways to highlight it so one of the things that I used to do with Nadi especially if I'd gagged her I'd tell her if it gets too much hum happy birthday you know yes. if you can't yeah. articulate anything at least you know give me some sign and I know to undo and stop what I've just done yeah. and then we can talk about it mm. yes mm that mm. kind of thing um, but it is very important as a model to you know know what is going on what's going on what's kind of a good pain and what's a a, 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 a dangerous pain yeah and it doesn't there is necessarily have to be a, a strong one no but you've got the advantage of knowing your body very well yeah from doing hoop yeah uh, from pole dancing yeah. and all manner of aerial yeah. Yeah. things so yeah I think something that I also uh, encourage now that I probably I didn't do enough uh, at the beginning is encouraging stretching more and definitely so important not only for the model but for myself yeah, yeah. so I'm trying to do some yoga now and stretching and um, actually we should do this because I found an exercise for stretching the radial nerve in the arm so Okay. Because sometimes it's stiff, sometimes yeah. it's not el um, elastic enough for things and can pull. Yeah. And that creates pain, especially when arms move in certain position. And I found out through yoga that it's actually an exercise that helps you stretch in your area. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. 
yeah and I said definitely we uh, so yes I'm, I'm now considering way more uh, the stretching of the body both for uh, model and regal mm. so keeping um, keeping really healthy yeah keeping healthy and not going into something complex if the body is not warmed up yeah before. yeah mm. so I'm, I'm just more aware of, of these kind of things which at the beginning I wouldn't have considered yeah as much I think the one thing that I've become aware of is the the sort of Dunning Kruger effect. In other words, oh, yes, not knowing what you don't know. Yes. Um, yeah. That I certainly found that every time I've ever been to Japan for tuition, um, I've gone out there thinking, I think I've got got a handle on this now, <laughs> and within. A matter of minutes, pretty much, in a class, you so I'm suddenly thinking, what were you thinking? <laughs> you, don't know, you don't know the first damn thing. <laughs> the, the way that knowledge works, and I think this is in any field, it works the same way. You learn a bunch, you learn a lot, and you learn a lot, and you think you've got it all. Mm -hmm. But then a new layer, as soon as you get to that point, because you've learned so much, a new layer mm -hmm. opens in mm -hmm. front of you. You are able to see the next. It's that onion yeah. effect, you know, onion yeah. peeling yeah. the layers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're just moving through the layers of knowledge. Yeah. And any time that you get to a new layer, you think, it's oh, I know it. Yeah. yeah, This is it. But actually, all you find out is the next it's layer, more. which makes you start again into yeah. the new layer. Although the thing you right. can learn is once you've done it a few times, you go, I recognise a pattern here. Oh, so yes. don't be so damn cocky next time. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> you know that's what's going to happen when you get in front of a real you know, good teacher. He's going to start showing you stuff that you hadn't even thought about. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that, that's that, I would say, is probably the biggest thing I've learned about it. You don't know what others know. And what others know might be so surprising and so unbelievable. Like Jordan Peterson will say, assume that some, some, uh, somebody else knows something that you don't. Yeah. Of course. And yeah. it doesn't matter in which field you are. Mm. Which is the beauty of it, really. Exactly. Because, you know, you well, can constantly boring learn. life would be otherwise. otherwise. <coughs> yeah. All right, next question. <coughs> Excuse me. What is the most important thing you have learned? Well, I think I've just covered that. Well, I've okay. got something to add so, to it. I, so mean, let's, I speaking, mean, we can have that from other people. Speaking from us, you know, how to manipulate a body that's a lot bigger than us. Yes, you know, Shibari really has taught me how to understand the body's mechanics. You know, I can flip over a fully grown man, you know, I'm four foot ten and I weigh like seven stone and I can flip somebody literally twice my size just understanding how the body manoeuvres, what turns, what doesn't. How to remove the friction, and how exactly. to grab the body yeah. from the right. Yeah. It's, uh, and, and how to restrain it without actually needing any rope in the first instance because I think that's another thing. Correct the gripping would say, uh, John Rudeke, how to correct grip yeah it's like you know how to pick up a cup because you see the yeah the handle yeah right? but yeah. we don't know how to pick up a body yeah it is the but with shibari we actually learned it oh yeah and immensely you know even just little things of you know i think it was something that steve taught us you know how to get a body down oh, that circular, onto the ground. Circular movement yeah. up and down. So, you know, it gives you power. start like this and you, power. you just use the rotation of the hips and then you go down onto the ground rather than trying to flip them over, bring the legs up and then lower this body that's a lot heavier than you down to the ground. Yeah. It works both ways, bring the person up, up as well. And back up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I, mean, no. I think the other thing in that area, which you two are probably be far more expert about than I am, but is using gravity during suspensions rather than fighting gravity. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, because it's it's easier to do a series of transitions where you're coming down than yeah. it is than if you're coming up. Yeah. yeah. Because coming up, you've got to use your strength. Yeah. Yeah. And if there's an imbalance in weight, yeah, you've got real problems. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think what I've learned indeed is to to uh, <coughs> split the weight into 
smaller sections. So instead of me pulling up the entire body, yeah. I go up with, let's put up this leg and then let's put up the upper body. Yeah. And then I can move to the middle Yeah. and bring everything up because essentially that's easy. So yeah. I think, I think all this, as you said, the handling of the body essentially it allows us to learn how to be powerful yeah because totally. otherwise we wouldn't as be. tiny women exactly you know? it Which just empowers us yeah. to actually do things that otherwise we would not no. be able well, to do. what exactly. you're talking about i think is a little bit like um the way that you can move a big heavy object like say for example yes. if you want to move a washing machine yes um unless you're damn strong you're not going to pick it up like that and move and it. Yeah. it. However, if you tip it on one side and you walk it and then yeah. you spin it, drop it and walk it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You can move a very very heavy object quite easily. Yeah. Even if you're a tiny creature. And yeah, the same exactly. yeah, and the same as with suspension. If you bring one line up a little bit, then you bring the next one up a little bit. It's probably a damn sight easier than just bringing that one all the way up and then bringing that one all the way up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, that's why you have carabiners <coughs> and pulley system to, allow, to give yeah. you the power that you need. Minimize um, friction, maximize your uh, um, mechanical effect. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, I think I discovered that I'm powerful. Yeah. Way more powerful than I thought I would, yeah. mm. I would yeah. be. Yeah. Next question. We've sort of dived around and covered quite a bit of it, I think, one way or another. Is that biggest misconception? Biggest misconception. What would you say is the biggest misconception? I don't know. I mean, most people that I meet that don't know anything about it think it's absolutely brutal. You know, it is purely torture Evil. and, you know, and I suppose in its in the beginnings, that's exactly what well, it was, yeah. you know. It was a torture technique, but they don't see the the softness around it and of course it's not always soft but i think there is a great deal of love and care that goes into a shibari we, we don't session. want to hurt each other yeah, exactly. we never want to hurt you know? each other and and again They're that profile hurt, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly but i do think that is a huge misconception that it is just this kind of brutal painful act when actually in fact it's this dance of emotion a dance of pain you know something that feels really tough you know during a session you might alleviate that by bringing something else into the mix and it's that kind of yo-yo of god that's really hard and then you let down it's like oh that feels really fucking good and something else goes up and you know it's this this and then dance. you have the release of the endorphins and of yeah. all the hormones yeah. that actually play with you yeah keeping you in these soup of hormones in there absolutely i mean one of my favorite things is the come down of you know a suspension or even just floor work you know the untying that release of that oh my god feels so good and you feel your blood rushing and it's it's really lovely mm, uh, the misconception uh, that people have about shibari that i found is that is dirty that shibari is a dirty thing and i've some someone on facebook told me that asked me if I don't believe that I go against God by doing Shibari and I've asked him why do you think that because for what I know I respect my model mm -hmm. everything is consensual we are not going into anything sexual especially if we're doing a tutorial we're yeah. trying to keep it as professional and as you know technical as possible and yeah. we, we go into the into other parts that have nothing to do with with uh, sex, sex whatsoever. Yeah, whatsoever. even some sessions, you know, it's not about your sexual organs, it's everything around them. And some people may see that as seedy, but I think inherently for people that do participate in it, especially, you know, the way that we do, it's not always CD. Sometimes it is filth. It's utter, <laughs> utter filth. Fair enough. But that's because that's been decided, yeah. you know. To be the case, it was agreed for that. Yeah. yeah. It but was consensual it's and not, everyone is respected. You know, exclusively filthy. It, it can be... Loving. Uh, and loving caring. and beautiful and... Or it can be just technical and boring. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, exactly. And it can be painful and technical for pictures that yeah. you want to 
show a certain way you yeah. need to be there for one second, they yeah. take the picture and gone down. Because yeah. it's the impressiveness yeah. of, of that, right? Yeah. So I think that's one of the misconceptions that I found. Uh, Definitely. That I, found. I think one I, I come across a lot is that firstly you need to know a lot of knots. Mm. Yes. And secondly yeah. that it's complex. Super, super complicated. It certainly, it, looks, it certainly looks complex. Um, and it actual fact the how many knots do we use commonly? One and one the variation possibly, of that. Yeah, one and the variation of that. Well, because much. single column and then the double column, which is the variation, yeah. which is a single column cut in two. Split, yeah. Yeah. Split in two with yeah. So it's just really closing them with different frictions. Exactly. Um, yes, there are a few different frictions to learn. Um, but they are not set in stone. And it's just applying whatever works. And yeah, exactly. Moment, exactly. You know? um, as long as the and as long as they closed the wraps and that is tight. They, so they serve I, their function, and you can do whatever the hell you want to do. I think the problem is that people perceive it as complex because. What a lot of teachers expect them to do is is to learn a whole bunch of steps of a tie mm. without really knowing why, why yeah. and what they're doing. Yeah. And I think the big jump is when you explain to people why they're doing this yeah. and how these just reappear time and time again. And how is the same not applied time yeah. exactly? Yeah. exactly. Um, the same the, that exactly. the goal dates of a combination of five single column ties. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions. Yeah. The is complicated. But, yeah, I mean, if, if, if you're trying to learn, say, I don't know, three rope to katakote, 60 plus te steps, um, that's really mind-blowing to try and remember that. Yeah. that. It takes a long time to... But once you start to realise that it's actually just very few components mm. that you're using according to some very, very simple rules, um, it becomes a lot, lot more logical and from there you can extrapolate. You can say, well, okay, I've learnt this recipe, but how about if I change that ingredient for another one that does exactly the same? Yeah. Um, and again, you can, once you understand the rules, you can spot where you've messed up. Yes. If you go, now that looks wrong, and ah, and yes, it's because I ignored that rule, mm -hmm. and I should have gone Close. that way yeah. instead of this way. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of things like that, I think. Well, uh, what you're talking about is uh, learning something that it's step one, tie the single column, then you go with the rope towards the right, then you wrap around twice, and you close this friction with the next friction, so you have to remember, as you said, yeah, 60 yeah. steps, instead of remembering the tension is important, so I need to be careful at the tension, at the placement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The friction is to be tight, so not open, because otherwise it's it wouldn't be a friction. Purpose. It wouldn't yeah. be a friction even. You could not even call that a friction. So when you reduce all the rules to something, to just few rules, so instead of following 60 steps, you just follow three yeah, yeah. rules. Yeah. If you're tying, pay attention to the tension. The tension needs to be appropriated for the part of the body you're tying. So if you're tying an ankle, if you're tying the wrist, you will leave way more space. Mm -hmm. If you're tying a gote, you know, you don't want to, it's the right tension for yeah. the gote for the arms, or you would have the right tension for the thighs, um, which you can... So, yeah, we reduce the, the way we teach, the way I think Bruce and I, and, you know, we like to teach is by reducing those rules. So you only have few of them. You don't have to have gaps yeah. in the ropes. So as long as you know those, it will give you such a freedom yeah. to create. To and be creative. And I think that's what a lot of people struggle that with. That was my big just, light, mo light yeah. bulb moment yeah. after having yeah. sort of learnt a fairly wax on, wax off yeah. method. In other words, I tied two and three rope TKs until I could do them blindfold and mm. then some more. But the real light bulb moment was I suddenly realised actually what you're doing is you're learning the key ingredients. Yeah. Yes. You're practising them, you're le committing them to muscle memory. You're learning the whole, Yeah. so then you can understand but what, the... Yeah, the bit that actually was the, the final piece of the jigsaw, which sadly I was never told. It's just something 
I figured out that, hey, out these are ingredients, yeah. and I'm just repeating them. Yeah. Um, it, I was never aware of that, that information being transmitted to me, all the, all the tutorials I ever had. And because it the seems secrets to be... of the pro are not being shared necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, true. I mean, if, if, if you just give a man a fish, you know, and never teach him... Uh, to fish, you'll come back for fish every day. I suppose maybe we shot ourselves a bit in the foot <laughs> by teaching people to fish. <laughs> no, I don't think we have because you know the love that we have for this discipline is in the way that we want to share it with others. Yeah. You know, we don't want to keep it for us. We want people yeah. to have access to our knowledge so they can develop on top of that. Yeah. So they can we can learn from and exactly they can create their own shapes and their own sessions. Absolutely. They don't have to just follow what somebody else is doing. They exactly. can take it and do something different every single time with so it. We have a highest variation in the shibari yeah. and we remove those type of barriers mm. that other than that I don't think they should exist. But certainly after a while, you know, if you use that approach, you'll be able to look at sort of serving suggestions and, mm. and go like, I know how they made that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't even have to remember exactly every step. You just understand the concept and that would be yes. enough for you to be able to reproduce it safely. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. A, in a safe manner. Yeah. That's yeah. what's important. First, first thing is you look at it and go, I know what's what you've the done. engineering purpose of what you've yeah. done there? Yeah. How does it achieve that, you know? Yeah. Okay, I want to suspend someone, I want to suspend them from the chest, so therefore I want two nice secure bands that are going to support them properly yeah. and stay in place. Yeah, exactly. And that's all you're trying to achieve with the goto, really, yeah, exactly. is, is to that engineering function. If it does that, it doesn't really matter how it does it, as long as it's aesthetically pleasing. And uh, safe. Uh, yeah, yeah so, so, well, safe. well yeah. safe is achieving the purpose. Mm, mm. That's why you have two, one, upper, and that's why you, because we want to jump in. Yeah. Well, I think we've done it. I think that's about yes. it. Yeah. Yes. Because Sophie needs to go and her phone rings in the <laughs> living room. Okay, right, so, bye-bye, everybody. Later. Uh, hope to see you again more soon. Yes. Take care.